My name is Andrew Cook, and this is my MTC application video. And with me are Jennifer and Corey, as well, helping me out. Um, but to start off, just explain the purpose of this, this discussion, um, is to help both of you to, to come closer to Jesus Christ, to strengthen your faith in Him. Um, but I guess for you guys, what are some things that, that help you strengthen your faith in, in Christ, in your lives? What are some things that you do? That I, I do myself. <laughs> well, I make sure I read the scriptures and pray. Uh, but it goes beyond just taking the book out and then kneeling down before I go to bed as I sprawl myself across, hoping I can just go to sleep soon. Um, it's as I'm really tired in the morning <laughs> or at night, I, I pause to, to reflect on my Savior and make sure that I'm actually speaking to my Heavenly Father. Because that's what prayer is. It's, it's actually having the opportunity to speak. And so when I'm struggling to say a prayer, uh, putting the added effort into it helps me to draw closer. Awesome. So you find that as you, you focus more on your prayers, as you have more of a sincere effort, that, that your faith grows. Cool. What about you, Corey? Um... I definitely, especially lately, I have asked myself a lot of questions, and then I've gone to Heavenly Father and been asking Him too, and it's um, much more pondering than it used to be, and that's that's helped answer a lot of things. And something I liked about both your answers is that it requires action. Even like pondering, that's a, that's a way that we exercise faith. And, and so everything that we'll talk about today, and, and as missionaries, when the missionaries teach people, they invite people to act, to do things. So we'll, we'll talk about some things today, but it won't really make a difference in your life. You, your faith won't actually grow unless you act, unless you make a change. And so as we're, we're talking about these things today, make sure you pay attention to that. Um, and as well, um, I invite you as well to pay attention to the, the thoughts and feelings that come into your mind. For me, that's, that's one of the, like, the surest ways that I can recognize the Holy Ghost. It's just like, maybe like memories or just uh, maybe like a desire will come into my mind as I'm, as I'm learning about something. And that's, for me, is, is one of the ways that Heavenly Father is always, always inviting me to, to make changes in my life, okay? And so I might even ask you to, to share some of those things with us today. Um, are there any questions, anything that you guys have to, to start off? Good. And so we'll be using the, the pamphlet here that, that talks about the restoration of the gospel. Um, but we'll just kind of go through, look at a couple of pictures, and talk about like what um, I guess what you guys can see, um, what you guys understand, and then later we'll we'll talk a little bit about the first vision and, and read that account from Joseph Smith. Okay. So if you want to grab your pamphlet and and just look at the beginning, just look at the at the first page. Um, and Jennifer, what, what do you see right here? Uh, it's Jesus uh, showing, saying love for just one. Mm -hmm. And I guess, how do you think that, that one feels? Bliss. Bliss. Okay. Good. What do you, I guess, what comes to your mind, Corey, as you look at this picture? Um, there's just, there's a lot of love. You can see it. And, yeah, definitely, like Jennifer was saying, just for the one, and it's, it's different than for, like, a crowd or whatever. It's definitely individualized. And so, our Savior, he, he loves us each individually, one by one, and he wants to bless us one by one. And so he's given us his gospel, which is, you know, think how many people there are in the world. It, it fits for, for every single person. And so what do you think that, I guess, why do you think that, that God has given us this gospel? Like us specifically? Mm -hmm. uh, he's hoping that we would be willing to act and help others to come to that knowledge of truth as well. And that with the knowledge that we have, we'll act on it to learn more and recognize it for ourselves. Yeah. Exactly, that's great. All right, let's, let's turn to the next, next picture then. Okay, here's a family here. And, and what do you notice about this family? They're happy. 
and happy. Why do you think they're happy? They're together and they they can be together forever and that's awesome. And how is that, I guess, for both of you, I know you're both members of the church, how is how does that knowledge that your family can be together, how does that affect you? How does that influence your life? Um, it, it definitely, it makes me, I have a great desire to make it to the celest, the celestial kingdom to see my family again. I don't, I don't want to not see them after we die. Like, that's a really big goal. And I know it's a goal for my family. And so, with that goal, like, all together, I, I know we can achieve it. And then we'll get to see each other. Yeah. That's great. And... The gospel is that plan that, that God has given for your family, for Jennifer's family, for my family. And it's it's certainly the way that can bring that, that bliss and that, that happiness like we talked about in the first part. Can I throw something out there? Sure. Um, this knowledge also helps me to, to make every moment of my life have meaning. Um, just actually, just the knowledge of being sealed with my family. Uh, it makes forgiving my family members and forgiving everyone else who I will eventually be sealed to yeah. worth it. It makes spending time with people worth it because I'm going to be with them not just for those five minutes that I ever see them in the world, but for eternity. And so it's worth getting to know every single person. And it's worth loving every single person because we can be sealed. Great, okay, thank you for sharing that. I really like that part about, about forgiving too. Definitely that you know if we don't forgive and if our families aren't, aren't willing to to live those principles now, then there's no way that we're gonna be able to live that in eternity. Um, and so God he He had given us this plan for each 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 of our families. And in the ancient times it was communicated through prophets. And the prophets wrote down, you know, where where do we find the, the writings of the prophets? In the scriptures, right? You know, think back. You know, think about the role that the scriptures have played in, in, in the life of your family. Think about how it's it's formed your testimony. Miss Jennifer, is there anything that, that came to mind? Uh, just every night, uh, as far as I can remember, we always read scriptures as a family. Even when uh, we as children didn't know how to read, uh, our parents would walk us through it. Or if it was a late night, uh, our dad would would read a, a few verses to us, and to make sure we were paying attention, he'd say, listen for these words, and then we'd shout out when we'd hear the words, so it's like a game, and sometimes he'd throw random words like peanut butter out, and then he'd say, and Nephi ate a peanut butter sandwich, and then went hunting with his broken toe sort of thing, yeah. <laughs> and so, just the joy that came from reading the scriptures in the unity. And... And I think about the gospel and how it's restored. I think about like how your family, you guys read the scriptures going up. And then as we read the story of Joseph Smith, his family, they, you know, I'm sure it wasn't just reading straight from the Bible, but he had lots of those same memories. And that is what, what prepared him when he, when he prayed and asked God to know which of the churches to join. Um, but Jennifer, do you remember the scripture that, uh, that Joseph read uh, prompted him to pray? Uh, James 1.5. Yeah, you want to recite that for it? Yeah. Oh, I just blinked out. <laughs> um, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. Yeah. And it shall be given him. And it shall be given him. <laughs> exactly. And so I guess, Corey, as you heard that, what, what thoughts came to your mind as you heard that? Um... Well, like, like we were talking about before, it takes action, and you have to ask. If if you don't ask, you won't know if you're getting an answer, because you don't know what you're at. You know, you don't know what you're asking, so you can't see the answer that you're looking for. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's kind of roundabout. No, every every answer <laughs> requires a question. That's great. Um, and I know that's true. I know that uh, if we ask God, if we really sincerely pray. And ask questions, or if we ask for things we need, that, that he'll answer us. And so kind of with the themes of, of family that we talked about tonight, um, I invite you both tonight in your, in your nightly prayers to, to ask God what he wants you to do to, to improve your family.
what you can do is, I guess, as daughters or sisters, to um, to help your family come closer to Christ. And I promise you that as, as you do that, you'll be able to to receive specific revelation on that. So, so will you do it? Will you guys pray tonight and and ask that question? Yeah. And there any other other comments before we before we close? I don't have any. Okay. Awesome. Good job. Thanks.